talk a little bit about their company. And then we have sizzle reels from most of our panelists, and we'll take a moment to watch those sizzle reels. So Dee, if you'd like to go first. Thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Dee Ivette, and I'm the founder and president of 5D Spectrum. I've been in business um, since 2000, and I've been doing graphic design my whole life, um, right out of college. And um, I have a real passion for interactive media, so I kind of spun off of my graphic design background into um, children's game development, which kind of gave me um, a fun angle to my career where I always, you know, go to work every day and go, I can't believe I get paid to do this. <laughs> so um, fast forward 20 or so years um, without dating myself too much. Um, my company primarily focuses on web development, and um, but we started in DVD development, which was sort of a natural progression from the children's game development. So I did a lot of interactive DVD um, titles for Universal and Warner Brothers, including um, some of the biggest, you know, top sellers like The Matrix, um, full-featured web-enabled DVD products. And um, now with web development, I feel like um, with the, the way language has developed in HTML, we have a lot of opportunity to add interactivity back into our game. So um, I'm very still happy to be getting paid for what I do every day. And, uh, <laughs> and in web development, um, occasionally my clients come to me and they need a sizzle reel. So I've had opportunity um, over the last 15 years to produce a couple of video pieces that that um, my company is very proud of. And I did one just recently, actually, for a client who I've had for 15 years. Um, her name's Tish Saravolo. And she came to me saying, I would like to do a reel that tells my story so that I can do speaking engagements. So maybe you can, are we going to do that? Yep, we'll play that video okay, now. Thank you. Oh, the bottom one. A lifelong musician, Tish grew up playing in bands in the Los Angeles music scene. As a woman in a male-dominated business, she often faced discrimination. We would show up, we would want to do a sound check, we would have sound guys that wouldn't sound check us, and it was just this attitude of, ah, their girls are going to suck anyway. And it was, you know, or the pretty good for a girl mentality. And it wasn't fair. Encouraging ladies of all ages to do it all is Tish Cirovolo's mission. This is about a woman named Tish Cirovolo. She's a, a wife and a mother and an entrepreneur and a former 80s rock and roller, but she is also a woman with a dream. Anytime there's a girl that has anything to do with the guitar, I want to be involved because I want to inspire these girls and say, do it. This is what you can do. You can pick this up. This can change your life. Oh, yeah, I did not get to dance. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tish Cervola, and I am president and founder of Daisy Rock Girl Guitars. And I said, we should make guitars for girls, because if we make guitars for girls, maybe more girls would learn how to play guitar. Yeah, we have changed the world. Okay, and thank you for joining us, Nicole. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um, the format is so, what I'm doing is I'm just going down the row and giving everybody an opportunity to introduce themselves, talk a little bit about your company, and then you can introduce your sizzle reel and we'll all watch it. So, okay. 
go ahead. Great. Um, sorry, everybody, that I was late. Uh, my name is Nicole Smith, and I'm from a company called Brand New Media. Uh, we specialize in digital content creation, um, digital content broadcast, and television broadcast. Um, our head office is in Sydney, Australia. I'm based here in LA. Uh, we also have offices in New York, Germany, uh, Canada and the UK and we have our own TV channel in Australia and we have 15 digital channels up um, in different markets around the world. Thank you. Would you like to talk about your sizzle reel a little bit and introduce it? Sure. Um, the sizzle that you'll see today is it's the older one, okay, um, is actually uh, needs a little bit of an update to be honest, but it's kind of the overview of what our company does. Um, it kind of outlines that we represent media, that we own media, and that we also produce a lot of content as well. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you. Brand New Media has over 20 years experience working with brands to create content that entertains, informs, and inspires. We're leaders in content creation and multi-channel platform distribution, turning brands into broadcasters and connecting them with consumers. With offices and dedicated studios in Australia, Singapore, Germany, the UK, Canada, and now in the U.S. media capital, Los Angeles, California, our cutting-edge content creation and marketing experts bring extensive experience developing and creating award-winning content. And with brand new media at the forefront of innovation, our exclusive Channel Play platform delivers channels and content on all devices, anywhere, anytime. We are uniquely positioned to connect agencies and brands with consumers through engaging content and technology for verified real-time results. At Brand New Media, we can also fulfill all your Asia-Pacific media needs. And we adopt always-on strategies. For Me is your lifestyle channel, delivering inspiration, innovation, information, and ideas. Brand New Media owns and represents national channels throughout the Asia-Pacific region. And we've launched MTV and CNBC into the Aussie market. We turn brands into broadcasters because at Brand New Media, we think, create, connect. Wonderful, thank you. All right, next is Gia. Gia is a composer. Go ahead. Okay, so so you can't even pronounce my last I, name. I, 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 know. I, I just I looked at it. And I was like, I'm gonna do really good if I get. I know, right. I know. Well, actually, my name is Ria Irshadat, and I come from Jordan. Uh, most of the people here in the U.S. have been in uh, for ten months, and uh, nobody can actually pronounce my name right. So you can just call me Gia. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Um, I'm a film composer. Um, I've been in the uh, composition industry for eight years now. I uh, started as a pianist when I was four years uh, old, and then I just realized that my passion is composing music for the visuals and for motion pictures. So, um, uh, you know, back, back in Jordan, uh, our culture is a bit different, and uh, the promotion and the marketing is a bit different. So um, I'm going to talk about my uh, scissor wheel right now, but I would like you first to take a look at it and then I'm going to explain more how it works back in my country and how I'm going to change it here probably, if you can play it.
Thank you. <laughs> um, these are the films that I scored, and uh, I made sure that I uh, gathered uh, my most precious babies and uh, the music that I loved most. Uh, the fact that I didn't even, uh, I didn't write my name, I didn't uh, even write the names of the tracks or the films, and that was for, for the business side of the uh, sizzle wheel, which is actually, I had lots of people get um, curious about who is this gear? Is she a female? Is it a male? And how does she look like? So what I did is I uploaded this on my YouTube channel, and then I would just um, you know post it on Facebook, on my Twitter account, and everywhere. And uh, people would go and listen to the music, and then just enjoy the visuals for it couple of minutes and then they would be curious to go to my website and all these portals that I want to get most hits on. And this actually worked really well. And I'm trying it here right now with probably different kinds of music and stuff. Um, I just want to um, mention one thing that this music was scored in uh, LA and it was uh, performed by Hollywood's best musicians and I would like to thank them all if they're watching and I love them all. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And Jeanette, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I wasn't quite sure if I had the order here, right? <laughs> Jeanette DePatty is the president from Propeller Head Inc. How are you? I'm great, thanks. <laughs> thanks for having me. So it's appropriate that the name of my company refers to a hat, Propeller Head, because I wear a lot of different hats. And in Propeller Head, I combine three basic areas of expertise. Technology, I'm a major girl geek big time and then uh, marketing communications and content development those are the three sides of the triangle so I do that for a lot of companies and I've also created interactive content bringing together that technology and uh, content development hat now I live in LA so of course I have a passion project or two so I'm currently working on marketing my best-selling book and DVD called The Fat Chick Works Out. And this is my media reel for that. Joining me, two members, Jeanette DePatty. Jeanette DePatty. Jeanette DePatty. She's an author, a marathon runner. Two more. An aerobics instructor. Look. I got it. I'm going to shake it. Joining me, two members, Jeanette DePatty, did I get that right? Yes. Ma and the group's fitness advisor and author of the book, The Fat Chick Works Out. Oh, well, I yay sexy. <laughs> Jeanette DePatty is the group's fitness advisor. After embracing her size, she became a fitness instructor. Her video is called The Fat Chick Works Out. Why the name? To call out what people are thinking, right? They're thinking, wow, that exercise instructor is fat. Well, yeah, I am. But she decided not to let it stop her. I had been feeling very much like my life couldn't start until I reached a certain size. And then one day I realized I might never reach that magic number. I might live to be 80 and never get there. And how awful would it be to never start my life? I think there's an important assumption there, right? right. That you said, um, gain a little activity and lose a little weight. For example, I did a marathon, right? 26.2. You know how much weight I lost? 
Zero. Zero. I got um, much better shape. I was much healthier, but I didn't lose weight. And how sad, like if I had tied the idea of success mm -hmm. to the idea of weight loss, I would have gone 26.2 miles in one day without dying, right? And I still would feel like a failure. And that would be so sad. Sure. So we really want to decouple the ideas of health and doing healthy things from weight loss. So I think that focusing on the weight is focusing on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I say focus on lifestyle, focus on eating healthy, focus on exercising. Those are the things that are going to give you the best chance at health. I don't disagree with that. That look different about the two of us. And this is my body. Right. This is who I am. And I'm happy with that. So the fat chick works out. Those are all amazing for everybody. One more time. Excellent job. Truly really amazing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask questions and we're just going to go around and give everybody an opportunity to answer them in their own way. I'll actually, I'm going to start with Jeanette and every time I'll start with somebody different. So you have an opportunity to go first. The first question that I have is what defines a sizzle reel and has it changed over time? Well, what defines a sizzle reel is the sizzle, right? It's you're not selling the steak, you're selling the sizzle. And that means it's brief, it needs to move quickly. It's really about economy, right? How much information, how much, not just data, but how much emotion and feeling can I convey in two or three minutes, the shorter the better, so that I can grab somebody's attention and get them to attach an emotional feeling to me. As, as quickly as possible. I think sizzle reels have gotten shorter, as they should. Uh, I think our attention span has gotten shorter, and there's a lot more video to look at. And I also think that sizzle reels have gotten, there's a much wider gamut now, because you have people who are going out there with a, a GoPro camera, and they're capturing stuff, and they're quickly throwing together sizzle reels, and you have people that are spending half a million dollars on a sizzle reel. So there's really a very wide range now of what constitutes a sizzle reel. Excellent. Leah? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll get it it's right. Fine. One of these times. <laughs> I'm used to this. <laughs> how, how, how's the, the regular pronunciation again? Ria. So Leah. If you, Ria. So if you speak French or Arabic or Afghani or... I can or, barely speak you know, English. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going yeah, to gonna start saying, hey, you. <laughs> no, no, I know, I know. Yeah, this is this is a good and a bad thing, actually, for my name. So I get to repeat it many times. And uh, maybe, maybe someone would catch it. Good branding. <laughs> it could be a topic for another sizzle reel yeah, all by I itself. <laughs> um, it's the mother goddess of uh, Earth in Greek mythology. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. So can you tell us what you think defines a sizzle reel and how has it changed over time? Well, I, um, and, um, I, I'm just going to be honest about this. I wasn't introduced to the fact and the concept of the sizzle reel until really late. I would say like two years ago or three years ago. But um, if you come to think about it, um, every person is a salesperson. So um, I consider myself, I'm selling my brand as a composer. I'm selling my brand as a female, as, you know, I just have like 10 seconds to give that first impression. So whether it's a sizzle reel, whether it's a speech, whether it's, you know, maybe a photo on Instagram or anywhere. So um, I think that... The, the concept of the sizzle reel right now is really important, as Jeanette mentioned, because we do have a very short attention span. And for us musicians as well, we really have to use the visuals to integrate it with the music so that people can watch, especially visual people, and uh, listen as well. So I hope I answered your question, but... it's a great answer. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, and Nicole? Um, I agree with Jeanette. I think that um, it needs to be um, emotive and short and hot and, and people need to be able to relate to it straight away. Um, if you lose somebody within that first minute and your sizzle goes for two or three minutes, then you've kind of lost them straight away. So um, the shorter the better. 
Um, ours is probably a little bit too long. Mine, I think, is about uh, two minutes 20. Um, I think an ideal time is probably around 90 seconds or less um, because you really have that amount of time to give the information but also have somebody relate or want to react to you. Um, either want to engage with you or or want to understand what you're selling or what you're doing and then, um, you know, create a either a relationship or a business relationship from it. Would you say, too, that kind of like when we write for newspapers or, or write in general, we should always put the most important or the most tantalizing content first? I think so. Um, with mine, it's with our one, you see that it probably is three kind of major components because there's so much to our business and we're trying to get it all into one. Um, every single channel that we have actually has its own sizzle reel as well because you only have that first 20 seconds or whatever to capture them and then tell the message afterwards. So, yes, definitely. Excellent. And Dee? Yeah, I agree. It, it's definitely the sizzle. It's the hot stuff. So you want to you want to get to the point fast. And um, the the wonderful thing about the video format is that people remember because they're seeing it and they're hearing it, and they might even be reading a transcript on screen. So it, it is one of the most memorable formats to present your sales pitch. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So now how about what grabs your attention in a sizzle reel, like the ones that you've seen and what are some of the, the not only the do's, but some of the don'ts as well. And Gia, if you would like to start that yeah. one. <clears throat> mm. um, I really like Jeanette's because it, um, it touched my heart and I felt that I can relate to this person even, even if I haven't met her before. Um, it had that uh, wit and that fun it was very funny, and it also told me that there's a, a product coming up, which is the uh, the book, and I really look forward for it. So I think this was a very a very good sizzle reel. Excellent, Nicole. Um, I think there's not a one size fits all answer to that. It depends if you're talking about a business or an individual or what what the sizzle is about. Really, um, there's some great sizzles that have. Um, uh, people speaking and there's great ones that are just music and then there's great ones that just have a lot of text not a lot of text but certain words to jump out at you and I think it really just depends um, you know what what the company is and who the person is Excellent. yeah I, I totally agree with that and um, the the sizzle reel there are a lot of do's and don'ts but the rules have gotten so soft over the years because we all have iPhones and we're shooting our own video and you know it used to be the garbage in garbage out rule in video production and I think that consumers and people watching these video formats have have gotten a lot less critical of the actual quality of the video but there is still um, a point where the audio quality makes a big difference so if you don't have good audio it actually can lower the quality of what the person thinks they're seeing so um, I think that it's really important to have good audio and, you know, work with what you've got. We've got all kinds of assets these days from GoPro cameras and, you know, film clips on television and whatever other cameras we've got lying around. So it's and really a mix. It is. And you raise a good point, too. A lot of times we're, we've become very used to casual videos online. And I always feel like there's a fine line between if you're going to produce something and make it polished, then go all the way or just relax and let it look kind of casual and normal because it's sometimes when you try to do something in the middle that it doesn't quite work either way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Jeanette? Uh, I think the things that cause me to look at a sizzle reel are sort of the same things that pull you over a commercial break. You know, when you pull on, when you watch television, you need something that stops you in your tracks, that's arresting. So it could be a bit of controversy, it could be a spectacular piece of content, video or music, it could be celebrity, it could be something that really makes you think. But I think it's really important to understand the difference between a sizzle reel and say an explainer video. This is not the place to talk about how your product is put together. This is not the place to do a big feature benefits analysis, right? You've got two minutes to get them to think it's cool enough to click on something. That's it. If you have more of a agenda than that, you're using the wrong genre, I would say. Excellent. And that kind of leads into 
the next question is, what kind of creative elements do you like in a sizzle reel or do you think that works? And by creative elements, I mean everything from the actual production, special effects, animation, to a topic or a theme or a delivery method. And we'll start with you on this one, Nicole. Um, well, for brand new media, for this current sizzle that you guys have seen, um, I think an important element for us was to show um, awards or um, you know, press that we've received. Um, like Jeanette did a little bit of testimonial by having Dr. Drew on there to show that that experience so that people can understand that you um, do have credibility in your field as well. So from a business perspective for us, that was quite important. Um, in the next sizzle for brand new media, which is we're currently rebranding, um, it's, a, it's a completely different style altogether. It's more um, how the science um, of... Um, response and digital content goes with the emotion and how you produce engaging content. So the story for us has changed a little bit. Um, in terms of special effects and things like that, that's probably not more suitable for us, but I can see how that worked very well for Gia. Um, and again, I think it just depends on what company or individual is is speaking through the sizzle. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I agree. And it, it really depends on the project and what's appropriate for the project. So I love um, working with live footage. I think it really captures, you know, the essence, especially in the case of a speaker reel like the like Tish's. And um, you really want to see that's the selling point. You want to see how does this person um, behave on camera and how do they how do they react? Um, I, um, I think there's a lot of opportunity for anybody who is selling themselves to have a sizzle reel. So, um, you know, with the invent of all these easy to use cameras, um, I think the live video footage is, is actually the most compelling asset. Great. Thank you. And Jeanette? I think one of the important things, if you have the content to do it, is if you can have other people talk about how awesome you are, it's a lot of times better than talking about how awesome you are. Right. And so any kind of credibility, credibility building pieces that you have, if it's print media, pick out a quote, grow, blow it up real big, you know, put um, logos, anything that you can do to convey, hey, other people think this is important, too. And that's true if it's a media reel or a, a speaker reel or any kind of reel, really. Um, so I guess my suggestion for you guys is if you're getting media and i hope you're getting media make sure that you get copies of that media it's difficult to do you know you can't count on getting a tape from anybody from the station so you go and you buy yourself one of these little antennas that you hook up to your computer and you set your best friend or your husband or your mom up in front of it and make sure they capture it because if if you looked at my reel none of that content came from the media sources and if i hadn't collected it i wouldn't have had it i wouldn't have had those tools so anytime you can collect a testimonial anytime you guys do anything pull out your cell phone pull somebody aside find a nice pretty plant or a wall or something and just get them to say on camera why they like you because that's one of the most powerful tools i think you have that's great advice and you know, too, Burrell's Loose, I believe, will provide you with transcripts and footage. You have to pay for it, but if you ever do get in a, a situation where you really need something because you had, you know, news coverage, mm -hmm. they, they can help you out. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, for me, um, um, I, can, I can speak as a musician because what I really like about music is that it's a very abstract art. So I would really like to keep it as an abstract art. This is why I use three elements in my reels most of the time, which is basically the music, of course, that I'm going to promote, and uh, the motion, which is the pictures and the colors. I do really care for the colors and the emotion. So whatever emotion I, I want to trigger or I want to, uh, to expose or shed lights on, this is, what is, uh, this is the basic uh, element of my uh, reel. Excellent. Thank you. The next question is, and we started talking about this a little bit as far as professionalism versus doing it yourself because we all do have those cameras and cell phones and the GoPros and all the equipment and software that we could want to do this. So if somebody is developing a sizzle reel, what advice would you give them if they're going to go professional 
or if they're going to do, do it themselves. Which way do you think is better for different people in different situations? And we'll start with you, Dee. Um, yeah, that's a little bit of a loaded question because, you know, you really could go professional on for any reason. But I think it really is on a case by case basis. And who's going to be looking at your video? Um, so it's I think it's important to know who your audience is. So, for example, if I'm an animator and I'm showing my sizzle reel to um, major studios because I want to be hired, I'm going to show, you know, the highest quality footage that I can possibly show. Um, in the case of I'm telling a story about um, a new project, you know, I don't think that that the quality of the video is is as important as the story. So um, the story has to be put together in the right order with the right visual support. And um, so it, it's really the audience you have to think about first. Excellent. Thank you. And Jeanette? I, I would agree on uh, with everything that you said. And I would add, one of the things is that creating your sizzle reel takes a lot of time. So if your business is doing great and you're making $300 an hour right now, don't make your own sizzle reel. Hire somebody to do that for you, right? For the same reason that if you're making that kind of money, you're not necessarily doing your own gardening, unless you love gardening and then go for it. Uh, but I think part of it is, evaluating your own skill set. And then there's always the Hollywood beg, borrow, steal, you know, <laughs> get your buddies together, make pizza, make a sizzle reel. I mean, there's so much talent here that even without hiring a sizzle company, you probably know 10 people who are amazingly talented and can help you. And you have a skill that you can share to help them on their sizzle reel and so forth. So I think if it, it depends a lot on what kind of sizzle you're making and what's happening in your life right now. Wonderful, great answer. And Gia? Um, most of the time I go for professionals for my sizzle reel because I'm not really tech savvy. Uh, I just compose music. I'm barely good at anything else maybe besides composing music. So um, I just give them my, um, my idea and what I want to uh, what what the outcome I want from uh, from the sizzle reel, and uh, I try to go to to these professionals who I've worked with before, and as you mentioned before, that it ha it, ha it takes lots of time. So if I'm a, I'm in a rush or something, I just have to, you know, go to them, you know, earlier or before. Right, right, yeah. and sometimes that can be hard too, especially if you tend to be a little bit more A type like me to yeah. kind of give yeah, over that creative control to somebody Going else back and forth you know with the editing and with uh, you know just adjusting the concepts and stuff so this is this takes lots of time if you want it to be perfect or mm -hmm. close to perfect i think yours is very close to perfect thank you thank you. <laughs> that. thank you sure and nicole um i think if it's your business or something that you believe in or it's about you you definitely have to share some sort of creative control um, but ask yourself, do you know Premiere or some other edit suite? And if not, then you're probably not the best person to try and edit it together yourself. Um, if you're not a, um, a super creative person, then again, you're probably not the best person. Personally, I think it should be a combination of you working with a professional. Um, if you have a business where you have somebody in house, let them have a go and then oversee it and, and, um, massage it till it's what you need it to be because if it is about you and it is about your business and it's something that you highly care about it has to be a reflection on you um, but also it can't just look like you've just cut and paste it all together because it is a professional reel so I think it's a combination but I would definitely go professional path but keep hands on excellent advice Okay, so video is also changing the landscape of marketing and consumerism and how we buy product, products, how we research them uh, online. I'd like you to speak to that and thoughts about how it's impacting the way that we, you know, exist in this consumerism, you know, society. And Jeanette, I'll let you start with that one. Well, we're in a video world. So if you have a modern product and you don't have video offerings, you're really missing out. The second largest search engine in the world is YouTube. And Facebook is coming up fast alongside. The impact that you can have in a short period of time with a video is just so much beyond what you can do in any other format. That said, 
just creating video willy-nilly is not going to be a good plan for you because, as I said before, there's so much competition out there. So it's better to create a few really great videos uh, than to just create, well, it depends. If you want to be a YouTube star, then, you know, get your selfie camera set up and be prepared to do video every day. But if you're creating video for your business, it's important that you control what you put out there. Uh, but I just think that video is not optional anymore as a marketing tool. Very good answer. And Gia? Um, I agree with Jeanette because um, whenever I I go on to Facebook, let's say, which is most of the time, and you, get, you can just see on your timeline that you have all these videos that you can't even have the option uh, of not playing. They're just played, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, video is a very important tool right now. And as you said, we're, we're going on YouTube for tutorials, for just to learn a language, learn something new. So video is very important. Mm -hmm. And we have to focus on the visuals of it right now, especially musicians. <laughs> Nicole? Um, well, our business is based on it. So it's all about video content for us. It's all about even going back to that old TV of sight, sound, emotion. That's exactly what it is. And it's shorter and it's sharper and it's on every device. And I, if, if you're not doing it, you are left behind. It doesn't mean go out and make 150 crappy videos. Um, it just means make sure you're getting your message in the right duration in video format for the audience. Right. And I think, too, that this type of content that a lot of um, brands make, the mistake they make in the beginning is putting commercials mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. And we're really in a society now where people want to pull that content to them mm -hmm. and they want it to be engaging. So I think it's important to stress that this shouldn't just be like a commercial that you would air on the television. This is a different environment, totally. Right. Dee? Yeah, I just want to mention and embarrassingly enough, the amount of hours that my 12-year-old son spends on YouTube. <laughs> so, um, and I know this is true of all the kids in that, that younger generation. They are the video generation, and they don't even look at websites if it doesn't have video. So it's very important. Right, right. And Google's looking for that video content, too. It's mm -hmm. going to rank you higher if you have it. And like Jeanette said, YouTube is the second biggest hey. search engine out there right mm -hmm. now. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of take a, a little bit of a left turn because sizzle reels can be used for so many different things. And I was just kind of wondering what other ideas, you know, we've talked about bands, uh, brands, as well as, you know, corporate, et cetera. I mean, videos can be used for job seekers. What are some creative ideas that you've seen out there and uses for a sizzle reel that might not normally come to somebody's mind or you know, suggestions for how to create a sizzle reel that's a little bit, you know, maybe off the, the beaten path. I think I'm not, okay, I was, <laughs> wasn't quite sure where I was. Thank yeah. you. Uh, well, I'm going to share a story of mine that happened back in 2013. And uh, uh, in 2013, I had this concert in Jordan. And uh, at the end of the concert, where I played all my compositions and pieces, uh, some unfortunate event happened. I'm not going to go further on that. But anyway, this for unfortunate event uh, turned into a very positive thing because I used the video. I composed a music, um, a track, a very short track. And at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I am really, really furious with what happened at my concert. So the video went viral, everybody talked about it, and it got to the queen and the king of Jordan. And uh, wow. this is how yeah, things started to, uh, we had a campaign afterwards, and uh, I had lots of support, you know, and love, and uh, this is how I got, you know, my name and fame, kind of. So this turned into a very positive thing after I decided to not go, like, for the, uh, for the legal action mm -hmm. of the uh, unfortunate event, but rather just go for the video. This is how it worked with me. That's amazing. And yeah. it touches on, you know, that magic bullet we're all looking for yeah. with video is, you know, viral videos and making yeah, exactly. it, you know, get out there and making an impact. So, And if you are really genuine about it and people can just touch your honesty and know that you're, this is how you're feeling deep inside. So this is, I think, what made it, uh, you know, go viral. Excellent. Thank That's you. a great story. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right, Nicole. Um, well, I guess we use a brand new media videos in two ways, both push and pull. So we use videos as sizzles to um, entice brands and um, 
OTT platforms and, and whoever to work with us. Um, but then on the flip side, what we're doing is creating that video content for them to reach their audience. And I think it can be across any genre at all. Um, as I said before, we have 15 digital channels right now and we have them in food um, with anything from recipe spots to cooking shows, um, health and nutrition. Uh, we have weddings. We use a lot of user-generated content as well. And um, we work with um, second and third tier vloggers. I'd like to say first tier, but as you know, in the beauty space, they, they can earn a million dollars video, which is just crazy. Um, so for us, it, it's any it's any subject. Um, as long as we're working with the right trusted advisor to make sure that we're speaking the right language to reach their target audience. Right on. And, and uh, speaking of speaking the right language, um, we've been having a lot of fun creating um, very short um, sizzle clips for our, one of our clients. And um, their their customer are people, but the consumer is actually a cat. So we have been interviewing cats and, and cutting together <laughs> clips of cats um, testing the products. And so we do the pet testimonial videos, and we have a series of those on priscillaspetproducts.com that are quite fun. Wow, That's hilarious. Great. Puppies, cats, uh -huh. and babies, right? right. <laughs> monkeys. Yes. And monkeys. Yes. All yeah. right. And Jeanette, would you like to expand on monkeys? I, sure. <laughs> you know, I could talk all day about monkeys. I really could. Um, the thing is, you're making sizzle reels all the time. You just don't realize you're doing it. You, you go on Match.com, that's a sizzle reel, right? You, you do something on Indiegogo to fund your bake sale, that's a sizzle reel. We're in an environment where we're making sizzle reels all the time. We just don't call it that necessarily but i think you can use those same techniques right if i watch one more indiegogo video that's 14 minutes long it's like dude if you can't tell me in two minutes why i'm giving you my money you're not ready for my money right so i think that and you know it's the same thing with the dating site i mean it's like dude gotta get it together you gotta tell me why i should call you because it isn't there right now so <laughs> i think there's a lot of opportunities for us it even you know when you get on facetime and you tell your kid that he's got to clean his room before you get home or he's not getting the present that's a sizzle reel. i mean any kind of communication <laughs> right can be a sizzle reel if it's put together properly Excellent. That's a great answer. Now I'm just going to let you guys, if there's anything that you wanted to discuss or a topic you wanted to bring up, or if you had something else to say, please feel free to, to jump in and speak your mind. Otherwise, oh, I'm looking to ready. <laughs> open it up for questions. Yeah. Anybody have anything? Okay. We can open it up for questions. Yes. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So can you talk more about, because now I'm a startup, and I don't have my half million dollar editor, and I don't have my half million Kind of sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you use right now. No. And um, I need to put this stuff online, so that doesn't help me. Like, I, I mm -hmm. can't follow, I have to follow the same rules that I would follow if I was on it. So can you talk about that and how you get around the price, not around them, but like how do you work with does anybody want to take that one? <laughs> um, I'll just speak a little bit about the music rights. Um, I'm not really yet familiar with the uh, with the laws and rules here in the US regarding the uh, licensing, especially for the songs. But what I can um, give you a few ideas, uh, maybe you can go to uh, some college student and ask them to uh, compose or to uh, write a song for your for your reel, which is a very good idea, I think, because first you're promoting this person and then you're creating a loyal client for you. And second, because you're having this original content. So you wouldn't uh, have the risk of, let's say, um, have another scissor reel that might be a competitor and they're using the same music. So I would definitely recommend that you go for musicians, uh, college students, and uh, low budget uh, composers maybe who would be able to do that. 
I hope it answers. No, that's a, good answer. that's a really good point. I think that there's a lot of things out there available to us now that weren't even just a short period of time ago. Uh, I spend a lot of time on Pond5. They have a lot of great royalty-free music, and a lot of the money goes directly yeah, to the true. composers, which is a nice thing. We, we like for composers to get paid. I think that's important. So uh, my piece is just a, a stock music piece. As far as clips, you have to look carefully at what would be considered fair use. And that's a very difficult topic. And you can spend an, just in like infinite amount of dollars with lawyers. Or you can kind of look at the rules. And then you, you just have to look at your case by case basis, right? If you're using a news clip that has you in it or has your client in it and it's short and you're not doing it for Pepsi Cola, your chances are better. If you're doing it for Pepsi Cola, you're just gonna have to pay because everybody knows there's money to get, right? Everybody knows like the fat chick doesn't have any money, so we're not gonna sue it, right? So you have to kind of look at, at your situation and your client and and what the fair, fair use laws have to say. Excellent. Anyone else? Uh, I would I would agree with that comment very much. I mean, we personally buy rights depending on the market and depending what we're using it for, um, because you know we're a big enough company that we can do that sometimes. Um, for the most part, though, if it is something that we're publishing on TV or online, um, we will go to a composer. And we have a few that we use, and I can give you some names after if you like. Um, some are quite reasonably priced as well, and they then give you the rights for either X amount of time or a blanket license. Mm -hmm. um, because we have um, a TV channel in Australia, for example, um, there we have a, a blanket network license, which costs a small fortune, but that's, you know, once, once you get to that broadcast stage, as you know, then it's kind of out of your hands. You have to do it. Otherwise, they come running for the money. Right. And I would say, too, that there is such a thing as public domain. If it's 100 years old, go for it. Just make sure you're not using a recording that is by someone else who recorded it, say, 20 years ago. Um, and there's also parody rules. So if you're doing something that's more fun and tongue in cheek, you can actually use that. But it has to be parody, and it has to be not in the context of you selling a product. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. All right, I've got to cut this into a sizzle reel. I've got to cut a full point. First, yours. My name is Craig. Um, so I, I've covered all of these aspects, so I had to do two of them. With you, uh, smart sense. It's awesome. The composers get paid. And you can compose it. Let's say your video is 2 minutes 33 seconds. You can pick 2 minutes 30. And it'll have a beginning, middle, and end. The composer gets paid. And it's really reasonable, and everybody wins. So we win. Second, I use for my. Smart sound or sonic fire, and it works with Final Cut and it works with Avid, and they have little inserts. And you could do full orchestrations of the same piece of music or just background music. So you have a choice of the orchestration, and they're all you know, and then you own the royalty, it's royalty free, but you're paying for that royalty. And it's like 30 bucks for an hour, so it's really good. I use it all the time. Next, I used a few years ago, my kid did a thing at school, and we used Jump in the Lawn, uh, Harry Belafonte. And they did this bouncy mm -hmm. thing on stage. I put it up on YouTube. What YouTube did was it certainly, in certain countries, it won't be seen. Oh, well. But they actually put a link to the song, Jump in the Line, so whoever's watching can then go buy the song. Huh. So that they leave it in, but at the same time, they give the person who's listening, uh, listening to the piece, even though it's a mom and dad kind of video, that you can go and buy the song. So they didn't come after me and shut me down. But we did have a problem with just recently. I, I did a series five years ago, and I've been doing it for at least five years, called Kick Cancer in the King. As of two weeks ago, a woman decided to trademark the name. And she pulled us down from, she had a, a booklet out a few years back. Even though we registered with the writers, with the producers, field, and everything, we have thousands of uh, followers. And we're producing web series, helping people navigate through cancer. She had a booklet out about five years, the same exact time. And she went behind back doors. Supposedly is, and this is what I'm about to announce, it's a little shaky, but so here we have five years of work and sizzle reels, and, and she has the lawyers coming and shutting us down on Facebook and Google and YouTube and, and you know, all over the place. And have, have you gone to the trademark doc? Well, we, because that's prior art, really. I did at the beginning, and 
because I didn't think all oh. I know is that when I asked questions of even of YouTube and Facebook at the time, I said, hey, if I register this and I register the varieties, what do you mean? The thing is YouTube and Facebook don't care, right? Mm -hmm. They they if it's hard, they'll take it down. So it, it's the unfortunately because she came first the burden's going to be on you and um if you haven't spent some time talking to the trademark she got a registered trademark or she has a trademark pending well did she do tm or circle r tm or yeah okay so she's just claiming it so you can go to the trademark office and you can say hey this woman is claiming a trademark but she hasn't registered it with the trademark office or she'd be using circle r so yeah t i can i can say this microphone is awesome tm there i mean it's just it's yeah yeah you're yeah next because of what you brought up my wife did a doctor's episode uh-huh and this relates to everybody here. So let's say you do an episode and it's on YouTube. And this I just learned. Sometimes the easy things are extremely hard and extremely hard to get right. You can download an HD video from YouTube. And if you have the rights to it, if you go and doctors is on YouTube, you take the URL, URL, and put SS after those www dot and put SS right before the URL, it will take you to where you can download an HD MP4 or any other format of that video so you don't have to have somebody in front of the TV taping. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. We've been using that for <clears throat> football and you know, the doctor's episode that Diana created on. Mm -hmm. So that's something that everybody can use. And I, I don't know if it hacks you or anything, but it's just put an SS right before the URL, takes you in, and you download an HD version that you can put into the system. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you. That's great advice. Thank you. Yes. How much, if you wanted to pay somebody to do this, people really have to use What's that cost? Great question. Anybody want to bet that one? <laughs> a thousand to a million dollars. <laughs> I'll do it 500 to a million dollars. <laughs> It's based on the company who's doing it for you, their level of experience. It's based on, I mean, it's it's like anything. You know, you can make a movie for $5. You get a GoPro camera and you put it up on their media. You can make a movie for $80 million. It just depends on who you're working with and what level of expertise and professionalism you need. Or the actual video requires. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the length of time, yeah. too. A lot of people will judge by how long the video itself is going to be and how long they estimate their time. My husband actually freelances and does videos on the side and he goes between 250 and $600 and they average between two and three minutes. So, and I think he's pretty much on the reasonable side. Yeah. 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 He's a nice guy. <laughs> I, I do it all the time to those for people and it does, what I say to them is, if you have all your ducks in a row and I don't have to find all your music and I don't have to dig up all your clips and you just want me and I'll I'll do storytelling for you and I'll edit it, then it's a then I give them a great, great rate because for me it's just kind of fun. But if they're they don't know what they're doing and I'm searching here and, and I'll still do their clips, but then if it's taking me three or four days, then we have to renegotiate. Yeah, I call that on my invoice the PIB surcharge. That's the pain in the butt surcharge. Right? <laughs> because if they don't know what they want and they, right, sometimes you have to charge a little extra for just how much you have to drink afterwards. <laughs> okay, the lady over here with the black and white. So when it comes to ethics, sometimes um, it can go on and on and on. I want to know 
I'm about this close to doing this, um, how I can use a sizzle reel, just kind of in the fashion of what Gia was talking about, where you're, you know, disclosing something that's not right. But I know I'm a member of the National Press and Digital Journalists Association, and the good thing about that, it's a wonderful membership if anybody's a member of it, because we're actually represented by the best attorney firms that guarantee that as a member, we meet 100% ethics of the media. We don't write anything that's not factual, and we're totally 100% honest. So we got that behind us when we're an MPPA member. And it's a great organization for anybody that's in any form of media, in front of the camera, behind the camera. So how would you approach when, you know, the big bad guy say, you think we're going to pay this woman? <laughs> yeah. So I just want to get your opinion. Okay. I'm Interesting question. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna be me right now. Um, well, um, I come from Jordan. My my country is quite open-minded. Um, if you compare it to Middle Eastern countries, but we still have this male domination, especially in in my industry, and because we're still fresh in the film industry and everything, so. You know, just seeing a woman is, I wouldn't even go there. Um, I would get uh, like comments like, oh, what did you do to get that film? What did you, who did you talk to to get that film? I got that a lot and threats to my inbox and uh, just a long story. So uh, what I learned is that you demand respect. I'm not preaching or anything. Uh, you lay your boundaries. You tell them, listen, this is my contract. This is my, uh, my fee and this is uh, my work. So you came to me, you asked for my music, and this is what you're going to get. If you don't play by the rules, then I'm sorry, I'm not going to give you anything. So what, what I can tell you right now is that it's all in your head. If you, if, you, uh, if you radiate this impression that, oh, I'm a woman and I'm really afraid that you, you might not be paying me and stuff, this is what they're going to sense and they're going to think she's a weak woman, we can get her. So I'm not, I'm not really telling you that to go on strong and, you know, be offensive or anything, but, you know, just, just lay down your boundaries and do not settle for less. This is what I mean. Yeah, I have no problem with boundaries because I'm not a lawyer, but it's just after the damage is done and I'm just worried about the sizzle real part. Mm -hmm. How to make a creative sizzle real to exploit them. And that's what I'm in the process of how to do. And so I want to make sure how to be creative in sizzle real so that each person that would have been your investors or would have been your support is now going to yeah, I, I would be very careful. For one thing, the ability to create that reel in a way that gets sympathy for your cause without people thinking that you're whining about something that everybody in business experiences, I think that's going to be a challenge. And I think you also have to keep in mind that the people who are investing in these big companies are like, yeah, you exploited people. You made more money. Woo! You know, I'm not sure that the ethics mm -hmm. thing that you're hoping for is, I mean, if it's a major consumer brand. This is a shutdown corporation. Yeah. In other words, it's making half a million, brought in people, took loans, shut down, and we had a criminal. I think maybe. No, I, I think like maybe if you want to do a, an investigative journalist piece on that, that makes sense. But I don't think a sizzle reel is your tool for this because you have to get a lot, you have to get across some fairly nuanced information. And I think the sizzle is probably not. It could be. I mean, you know, spend some. Spend half an hour looking at anonymous videos and see how you know. I mean, there yeah. there is a certain warrior thing that you can do, but I, I think it's going to be challenging threading that needle of because people watch sizzle reels to be entertained. Okay. I, I just but don't it think it's your. Be. It can maybe, be. Maybe you can have it in a fun, you know, way, and then. Yeah, <laughs> I I think it can be done, but the yeah the. You just have to be, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I I just think in that sizzle reel format where you're really just looking to put out two or three minutes, I think the chances of it backfiring are fairly high. So. But maybe contact documentarians who yes. might be interested in helping you with that. 
you know, do a little bit of research on, you know, uh, kind of get all your ducks in a row, I would say, just to protect yourself so that you're careful against slander and libel issues and all yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. But this might be a great place for a website, you know, like crappycorporateguys.com. And you put, you know, you that, <laughs> but it has to be, you know, yeah, go go on GoDaddy right now. See if it's there. The guy in the back already beat us to it. <laughs> Dollar uh, seventy nine. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. That was great. Um, yes. Hi, I have two questions. Um, the first one is for Leah. Oh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, it's a very simple question, and I'm wondering. Um, so you didn't use any titles. You didn't have any text to direct viewers to. Yeah. Um, is that something you would recommend adding in, or did it work for you to keep that out? And then if I can ask one more question. Sure, sure. Uh, well, it worked really well for me because, as I told you, when, when I uploaded it on uh, uh, YouTube, uh, they would go to my channel and then they would copy and paste my, my name into uh, Google, into, and then my website would appear. They would go to my website and then my website would direct them to my Facebook page, my Twitter account, my IMDb profile. So um, I really noticed high numbers and high hits within that month of my, my reel. So I think it worked for me. I'm not sure if it would work for anybody else, but maybe in the you know in the style of my music and the colors that I use and everything, this this was really good for me. Okay, thank you. Okay. And then I have a question because um, I'm creating a simple reel for someone with a large millennial following, um, but they're also trying to use the simple reel to target a more um, not corporate but a more uh, studio-like demographic. So in terms of combining something with the style of Leah with maybe a little bit more selling points of um, Nicole and uh, Nikki Bell, what would you recommend in terms of leveraging a big millennial following with more advertising-like tools to kind of appeal to a broader base? What do you think of that? After you. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> um, well, I would say, first of all, you're trying to talk to two totally different people. So you may actually find it best to do two totally separate pieces. Um, your millennials are, they want to watch the 30 second, they're, they're like back to back 30 second spots, you know, whereas, you know, your, your um, older generation, newer to the video, watching online crowd, they might be willing to sit in front of a two minute video. So I think you you might actually have to chop your content up into smaller bite-sized pieces for the different audience. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, and also it, it depends like um, what what the product is or what who the person is and how they, you know, what their um, goal is, I guess. Um, if it is millennials, even, you know, it's something that you could probably put out on YouTube where it would need to be more polished for that studio style audience. So two pieces make sense and two different durations make sense. But if you do need to put it together, um, I think if you make it as straight down the line as you can and have components of the millennial, but really make sure that if, because if they already have the millennial following and you're trying to get a larger following, then you already have that audience. So I would lean towards trying to get the other audience. And speak to them. Excellent. You? Um, I have a comment and then a question. It seems like everything now is a civil war. It seems like all communication has to be quick to the point. Entertainment's changing, everything, you know, watching uh, uh, snack bites on your mobile. So it seems like you all are touching the trend of the time. So, blah, blah. Second, so is it just you two or who does work for hire? I do. Oh, you all do? Somewhat. All right, we have just a couple more minutes. The lady right here in the, the green? Khaki? Yes, you. Bl blonde hair? <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it's green. Snippets out and they're powerful, but 
can we talk a little bit about testimonials and that the concept of sort of capturing your image and your brand and sort of coaching them to, to get the best piece of that out, and then obviously the composing of that and weaving that all in together with story tools and advice or tidbits, especially when you're talking about 90 second video. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Figure out exactly what you want them to say and then target your question to get them to say that. <laughs> you know, it, it, I think a lot is in the questions when you get testimonials. If you just turn a camera on a person and say, hey, what do you think you're going to get? Blah, 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 blah. You know, but if you tell them, if you ask them short questions and you're very animated when you ask the questions, you're likely to get a much more animated answer back. I mean, I've, I've created a lot of um, EPKs and um, I've created a lot of behind the scenes things for, uh, for DVDs. And, you know, it doesn't even matter if they're a very well established celebrity. If you don't ask the questions the right way, you're not going to get what you want out of it. I don't know if you guys want to elaborate. I totally agree. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And in terms of um, getting clips from TV and things like that, I agree with what you're saying before about the way you get someone to record them or whatever. Because if it is a personal sizzle, it's not going to be published, then you can use it to a degree. Um, we don't usually make sizzles for individuals, but I've made one recently for somebody um, sort of as a favor and all she had what was on YouTube. Um, and I didn't know about this SS thing, so thank you. I'll start using that from now on. Um, but the quality is terrible. And, you know, if the rest of the sizzle looks amazing and that falls apart, to me personally, I think the whole thing falls apart then. So um, I know it's hard in the moment, but whenever you can, capture as much as you can, even extra stuff, it doesn't matter, get whatever clippings, anything, media monitors is quite good as well, um, and just get as much resource as you can. And if it's for somebody else, surely they're keeping a bit of that resource. And don't forget, there's also what you can take off social media. I'm going to add one thing that might help you also is my cameraman, um, the difference between using media, I mean, cameras on some little cameras and just having that great comment and always 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 use two microphones because if you miss it on the one microphone yeah. everything you've done is a waste okay i think we have time for maybe one more question was there another hand that i saw no okay go ahead <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll tell you this, because, you know, when this the idea for this panel first came up, Laferne Cusack, who is the co-president with me, I think she actually got the idea after she saw a sizzle reel that I actually created for my job search. But I didn't think that was an appropriate thing to show here. <laughs> So I do have one, and if you really would like to see it, I do yes, have my laptop, and I'll, I'll, I'll show people outside of this very public environment. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> yes, I am chicken. I think any environment is an appropriate place <laughs> to show your job, like bathrooms, subways, I think any there environment. You there you go. I'll meet you in the bathroom later tonight. <laughs> We're having a screening. And stall number four. <laughs> there you go. All right. Thanks again, everybody. You've been wonderful. Our panel has been amazing. Thank you. Um, thank, you. thank you all. Later tonight, to the Alliance for Women in Media is very, very proud to be part of our evening event. This is all part of the Women's Track, the Women's Summit for Women in Entertainment and Technology. And tonight we're going to be doing another panel, too, so you can join us as we talk about success. We look forward to seeing you there. Once again, thank you and enjoy your day. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much.